So in about 30 seconds, the main chutes are going to come out. There are four of them, and they deploy at about 6,500 feet. Oh, Gary, look at this. This is an excellent view of the drogue uh, parachutes. Is drogue separation, main chute deploy. We'll wait for confirmation of four healthy mains. You really can't ask for anything better. We got confirmation of, uh, you heard on the loops there, four healthy mains. Descent rate is nominal. That means we are expecting splashdown three minutes from now. Visually, you can see one of the mains uh, taking a slightly longer to inflate. But the teams are, uh, are tracking that as a nominal inflation rate, uh, and the descent rate is as expected. We do have four healthy mains, and we are expe expecting an on-time splashdown. Copy six. Six hundred meters. This is a better shot of those four healthy main parachutes attached to the Dragon spacecraft Endeavor as it continues to descend. Four hundred meters. The rate is as expected, 400 meters from splashdown. Three hundred meters. Two hundred meters brace. We copy two hundred embracing. Standing by for confirmation of splashdown. SpaceX, welcome home to planet Earth. Hey, Chris. So it's great to be back to planet Earth. And thanks to SAE and Jackson teams. Uh, it was an honor to represent you and work with all to our family. Look forward to seeing you soon. Splashdown confirmed at 7.33 p.m. Pacific, 10.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Four astronauts of Crew 2, Shane Kimbrough, Megan MacArthur, Aki Hoshide, and Thomas Pesquet now safely returned to Earth. Confirmation that the main parachutes have been cut, and you can see from the thermal imaging camera that the fast boats are already on their way to meet up with Crew Dragon Endeavor. Now splashing down off the coast of Florida for the second time. Hey Shane, you're coming in broken, but we see stable one. Copy, great news. 
Stable one is the configuration that we were hoping for. Stable one means it's in the ocean upright and as expected. So the teams have been uh, ready and waiting about three nautical miles away. And Dragon, please repeat. Yeah, we're going to raise our visors if you got that. Hey, go for visor raise. So it looks like the astronauts inside are going to be lifting those visors. Uh, the recovery team has been uh, waiting about three nautical miles away. So it is going to take them a little bit of time to make their way to Shane, Megan, Aki, and Toma inside of Dragon. Uh, quick rundown of what is to come. Um, so about a minute and a half after a splashdown, uh, Mission Control here in Hawthorne will give the go for safe approach. About two minutes away, uh, two minutes from uh, splashdown, the approach boat begins its inspection. Uh, we are expecting that um, ordinance and hypercall check to complete around the L plus 12 minute mark, around the L plus 30 minute mark. Dragon, SpaceX, come check. Endeavour has you loud and clear, SpaceX. We have you loud and clear as well. We stopped the boat. We have you much better now. So some good comms checks uh, on screen right now. That is the Dragon capsule in the background, uh, upright and stable in the Gulf of uh, Mexico and uh, there's a boat that is heading towards it. So um, at about L plus 30 minutes, uh, the Dragon rigging will be, is expected to complete. Again, rigging is where um, a, a, an employee as part of the recovery team will physically climb on top of Dragon and attach hardware necessary to hoist Dragon up and out of the water. Recovery ships um, also arrive at this time um, at L plus 38 minutes. Uh, that's when we're expecting to lift Dragon out of the water. Uh, L plus 40 minutes, Dragon will be on deck of the recovery vessel. And then at L plus 48 minutes, we are expecting Dragon hatch to open and the crew to egress after about six months uh, in space. That is the goal, to do this in under an hour, and it seems like the, the crew is right where they're supposed to be, right on time. We're getting thermal images of uh, the uh, fast boats out near the Crew Dragon Endeavor in the uh, wonderfully smooth waters of the Gulf of Mexico as predicted, which is fantastic. Um, you can see there's two boats that are out towards the recovery vessel once we uh, get a, a smoother lock on the vehicle itself. One of them collecting the parachutes, uh, the other uh, doing some of the rigging that you were talking about, Andy, which is uh, super critical to the next series of steps. Um, Dragon, SpaceX is go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personnel alongside momentarily. Okay, Captain out, we're ready. So we should see one of the fast boats go out really right next to the capsule. And uh, Andy, you were describing this a little bit earlier. We'll see um, some personnel climb on board. Um, that rigging equipment is hardware that they have on board and they have to attach certain things to certain areas um, because the recovery vessel itself, the Go Navigator, uh, is also moving out to- Dragon, in, SpaceX, request permission to come on board via display cam only. You're welcome on board on the display cam, SpaceX. We copy. Thanks, Shane. So the teams here in Mission Control Hawthorne will get a peek inside the vehicle itself, um, watching over their shoulder. The, the crew themselves really uh, are just in a waiting position. 
Um, their seats were rotated uh, for shoot deployment and for splashdown. Uh, so they're in a slightly more upright position, although they're not completely upright. It just helps to help them to brace. Uh, you heard that a couple of times over the drag and the ground calls, brace for those shoot deployments and for the splashdown itself. Uh, but really, they're in just a waiting posture at this point as the uh, recovery teams do their job. It'll take the Go Navigator recovery vessel, which we're getting some of the images from right now, um, the thermal images. Uh, it, it takes it quite a bit to get out to the capsule itself, about 30 minutes, but, which is why we have the fast boats. The fast boats doing a lot of the uh, work ahead of time to prepare it so that really when the Go Navigator arrives right next to the spacecraft, it is ready to hoist onto the recovery vessel and onto the Dragon Nest. You can see that each of the boats are outfitted with uh, spotlights to make sure that they can, again, do all of their functions uh, properly as it, this is a nighttime recovery out on the East Coast. But it looks like they have plenty of lighting. And this is the second time that this particular capsule has landed. Right. Um, so this, this capsule Endeavor was used as part of the Demonstration 2 mission last year, uh, Flying Bob and Doug, and it has splashed down and been recovered once before. So uh, this is not its first rodeo. Really a testament to uh, the capability of these American spacecraft that are rotating crews to and from the International Space Station as part of these expeditions. It is truly an international team. From the camera views that you're seeing right now uh, on board the Go Navigator is uh, teams representing NASA, SpaceX, European Space Agency, and the Japanese uh, Exploration, uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, all of them on board. Uh, truly an international uh, government and commercial joint effort to make something like this possible.